Last night, Gypsy Rose Blanchard's boyfriend, Ken, jumped on a creator's live on YouTube. I think there were eight or nine creators on this live, and Ken asked to join their live. At first, they're like, hold on, is this really Ken? They didn't think it was Ken, but it turned out to be Ken. And he stayed on their live for a long time, and he answered almost every question. There were a few questions he was like, you know, that's our personal life. I'm not going to comment on that. But for the most part, he answered all of their questions. This is a five and a half hour live. Is this Ken? Is this the real Ken? Oh, yeah, this is the real Ken. Oh, my God. Does is it know really? You know no? about the, uh, the twang in my voice? Can't you tell? No, not really. No, I can't. <laughs> Of <laughs> it's funny because at first they were like, no, this is not Ken. We cannot tell it to you. But turns out it was Ken. And at the end of their conversation, Ken agrees to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with the creator hosting the live. Sir Morbid X is the host and he asked the first question and right off the bat he says, do you have a job? Because remember, Ryan went off on Ken last week on TikTok Live saying, Dude, you don't have a job. Your woman's pregnant. You're about to be a father, and you don't have a job. Hey, Ken. So, uh, are you are you employed right now, or what's going I am. On? I am employed. Uh, it's it's funny misinformation. I mean, everything, almost everything about me on the internet is lies and misinformation for the most part. But I am employed. However, obviously. Because I work in the service industry as a bartender in the public domain, I I don't want to release you where could, I work. Yeah. I don't want to keep Hell no. well, that's okay. I mean, people I were speculating that, that you work. I think at that eventually, Andy. though, it will come out where I work. Somebody's going to recognize me at some point. Well, um, I'm sure they are. Probably, but yeah, as of right now, that has not been uh, put out there. So then they ask Ken about the grinder comment. This is the comment they're referring to. Cowboy Bear for you left this comment on social media saying, by the way, Gypsy, you should really investigate on Ken. Some of us have met him on Grindr and Grindr is a gay app, FYI. What's up with this Grindr activity? I mean, and, and there's a Steve Wood and do you, you want to talk yeah. about that and squash sure, that? Why not? I mean, I, I feel like I've already squashed this before, but it just keeps coming up because I think the reality is, is that people just love the drama and the speculation narrative rather than the, the the truth, which is the truth is it's all lies. It's all complete BS. None of it has any proof behind the it. The Grinder account is lies. 100% fake. Yeah, I've never even downloaded Grinder, and I can prove that. If you were to look at my like How do you prove Apple that? purchase history. Well, if you go into your, uh, and I only found this out by a comment that someone posted where like, Gypsy, go look at his Apple purchase history. And if you like look at my iCloud account, which I've had since 2008, you can see that I've never even once downloaded the app. Next, they ask Ken when he first hooked up with Gypsy, like this year. Because remember, the deleted scene that just came out by Lifetime shows that Gypsy and Ken were talking back in February. When did you hook up with uh, Gypsy? Because it looks like it was February. That this happened so uh, we had a like, be I mean, honest was, man no, don't lie okay, about I'm, it i'm being 100 percent honest the very first time i ever had a physical reconnection with gypsy was a week after she separated from her husband it was april 1st was the weekend that i came down for the very first time and saw her in person so not five jazz years ago. Fest. it was not well, jazz, well, jazz fest, fest was, was a month later Jazz that was in no, April, it, uh, oh, wow, end of April, May. Right. I'm just trying to say, like, yes, did I have a, a, a conversation with her late February and then and then on a few times? I did, but it wasn't in the sense yeah. of like a relationship wise. It was just like a, a, a talking, hey, how are you doing? How you been like kind a, of thing. Like a few, and the like, first time we you. ever, there's all this like rumor and speculation that I was coming to visit her in January, February, which is just completely untrue. I mean, she was living with Ryan in Lake Charles. But three dude, hours you were away talking from, to her in February. Or Late March. February, we had we had a we, we had our initial conversation. Yes, like it was just like a hey, how you been? Like kind of conversation. Ken also says the first weekend he hung out with Gypsy when they got the matching tattoos. None of that was filmed for Lifetime. But and Ken, can you understand really the first time y'all hook up and meet? Okay, you're getting tattoos. Yeah, no, it's it's bizarre for sure, but you know, it was an impulsive, it's bizarre. Fun, I mean, fun decision. I mean, I, I mean, you know, listen, it is what it the, is. Are, did you go there with just the intentions of getting bestie tattoos and being best friends forever? No, I mean, the intention <laughs> was to see each other for the first time in five years, spend time together, have those moments in person for the first time ever outside of prison walls, but, yeah, and to see, you know, if if we, you know, if that like 
friendship uh, translated outside of prison and we had fun and actually there are eight creators and Ken on this live so it gets a little hectic at certain points everybody starts talking over everybody but at this point they start asking Ken you know you had this initial conversation with Gypsy back in February knowing she was married okay people label you as a home wrecker now what do you want to say about that <laughs> Oh, I have a lot to say about that because there wasn't a home to wreck. I mean, Gypsy, <laughs> she left her husband. Was. Gypsy left her husband and that's when we reconnected. I wasn't sneaking up in her house in the middle of the night while they were still living together, while they were no, still in an active marriage. That's not so. Why the rush? I, I, there was no rush. I mean, she left Ryan. She what? moved back, to, back, with, back with her parents. We hung out for a weekend and then, you know, here we are now. I mean, I, I like I said, I wouldn't have. Huh? As a huge rush, you're having a, a child. Like, why weren't you? Well, I mean, doing you know, the, the, the pregnancy that? came at a surprise, and that was later on. That wasn't it's that first not, weekend. But not, doesn't you jizz in her, and you can only expect a surprise <laughs> nine months later. I have a question. Well, I'm not going to get into all <laughs> I mean, that. I did. Of, uh, I did. Like, but, you I'm know. Just they also asked Ken if Gypsy knows that he's on live with them, and Ken said yes. She knows that he is talking with them on live, but she's not there in the room with him. Next, they asked Ken why he broke it off with Gypsy years ago. Together for two years, and then um, right around the summer of 2019, uh, I had a lot of outside voices talking to me, telling me how my relationship was negatively impacting her from growing as an individual. This is a person that's come from a life of nothing but codependence and has never lived a life of non-codependence and has no idea of her own self-identity and her own progression and her own self-worth. And these words were not coming at me from just regular people across Facebook and whatnot. It was also like big name figures like Dr. Phil and uh, Nancy Grace. And this is a fact. I mean, Dr. Phil put out a podcast where he talked to me, referenced me by name and told me how all the reasons why or all the reasons of, of me being in a relationship with Gypsy was a negative impact on her. And what? a lot of those voices registered in my head and I felt like they were accurate and that they were true and that I needed to give Gypsy that separation and that time to find herself, to grow in her own independence, to find her own identity. And then later on in the long run, who knows where life will take us. So I separated based off of that. One of the creators chimes in and says, but she never lived independently. She went straight from you to Ryan. I can't help what choices she made after our separation. And, th and those are things that I realized after the fact. But you act but, like um, she's grown or changed. Like, she has, has she? She okay, has. I think can that you it's tell important. me how? I, I think that how it's important not to changed. internalize Gypsy and that she has made a lot of growth and progression while in prison and out of prison. And that such she has. As, such as? Such as what? I mean, what do you mean? Like, I mean, she has, she's gotten her GED. She's learned a little bit more about how the real world works since being out. Then someone changes the conversation. And the next question to Ken is like, are you scared? Like, are you ever worried that something might happen? Do you sleep with one eye open? Are you, well, not are at you all. fucking no. Absolutely scared? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He wouldn't Gypsy say he is was anyways. One though. of the sweetest yeah, I know. people I've ever met in my life. And she brings... Uh. A lot what is so world. sweet about her? Because we're trying to understand yeah. where you're coming from here because I, we don't get it. She has a story to tell. She has lessons that can be learned from other people. And um, so what I mean, is the story that she wants to tell to all She's, of us? That why is it taking so long for her to tell it? She's Sorry, already what? wrote a book. How many stories are there to tell? To I mean, I think that her as... story is just so incredibly unique. Um, but also falls mm -hmm. into a category of uh, of a lot of unheard cases of Munchausen by proxy. And um, I think that, you know, that she does have a position in possible advocacy work to help other victims uh, of Munchausen by proxy but Ken, get out of a situation she, that they're in. What is she doing for that, though, right now? Or what has she well, been doing since she's been There's released? not a lot that she can do because she's under parole and she has a lot of stipulations against her. And uh, yeah, so she's not she allowed to talk do to other Yeah, she could do makeup tutorials and... Why not? Yeah. What's the problem with that? Like, why can't well, she just it... live her life? Next, someone asks, is she being honest about everything? Is she a fraud? What's the story? She is being honest. I believe that she is being honest about her you story. Do? There's a lot of misinformation that comes out about her. And but... there's a giant hate train against her that just wants to derail her at every turn. 
This is a five and a half hour live. If you want to listen to it for yourself and hear everything Ken had to say, the link to this video will be in my description box. If you want to check out that deleted scene from Lifetime, the one that was mentioned during this live, go check out this video next. Thanks for watching. See you next time.